I'm gonna tell you something I've never told anyone. 30 years ago, my friends and I spent the night at a cabin. We found the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, the Book of the Dead. Certain passages were recited. It awoke something in the woods. Something evil. I was the only one to escape. But now, the evil has found me. Hello and welcome to the Ash vs. Evil Dead podcast. This is a podcast in which we journey through the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series, which is currently airing on Stars. But by the time you hear this, we'll probably have wrapped up and we will know more about uh, the future of the show as the months progress. I am one of your hosts, JP, and joining me today is my homie Kyle. What's going on, buddy? Hey, what's up, JP? Back again for another episode of the Ash vs. Evil Dead. We're, like, rolling through these, like, insanely quick. <laughs> I know, it's nice. It feels good, too, because this is a fun show, and I like talking about it. But those of you who are unfamiliar with this podcast, maybe just joining us for the first time, we basically cover each episode, go in-depth. There will be spoilers, so you will have to either have seen the show or just not care because we will give away stuff that happens. You can't really talk about a TV show without giving away things. And also, this TV show is on the Stars Network. I'm pretty sure you can get it on demand or, you know, DVR style, so check it out that way. We are members of the Horophilia Network. This is where you can hear the podcast also on 22shotsofmoodsandhorror.com. Please check us out there. Also, our personal YouTube channels, The Horror File, which is Kyle, and Double Shot J, which is me. iTunes, rate us, review us, subscribe to us. It is where it is the easiest way to probably check out this podcast and many others. We also have an X-Files podcast you can check out that has uh, been going on for quite a while now as well. Hell yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll kind of get into this episode. Um, you know, we, won't, we don't want to run too long with these. Uh, we're on season one, episode six, and it's called "The Killer of Killers." Uh, this is directed by Michael Hurst and written by Nate Crocker. Uh, and this episode actually debuted on December 5th of 2015, so we're we're still within the month. So this debuted 20 days ago from the ten- the date that we're actually uh, recording this. So. Um, I don't know about anything about Michael Hurst. Uh, have you looked any anything about him, director? Uh, yeah, he he's he's mainly an actor, honestly. Like he was in the uh, he was in a lot of he was in sixty nine films. Uh, he was in Bitch Slap, which is sort of like an exploitation modern day type thing. He did a lot of TV, uh, some Xena Warrior Princess. He was in that show. Uh, he was in Hercules, just a bunch of Hercules stuff. Heroes he was in, uh, not the not the uh, newer series. There was a t- series that ran from 84 to 86 called Heroes. And uh, that's pretty much all that stands out to me. I don't really know much about him uh, the, other than he was an actor. Uh, I don't know if he did much more director work. It does look like he did some TV director work, like he did Xena Warrior Princess, uh, Treasure Island Kids, whatever that is. And uh, he did a few episodes of Spartacus. Uh, and that's kind of it for directing. Uh, we will see his name pop up again in another Ash vs. Evil Dead episode, though. And uh, as far as the writer goes, Nate Crooker, uh, he just really has only done Ash vs. the Evil Dead. He wrote a short film, and he was a script production assistant on Workaholics, and that's pretty much it. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So the viewership for this episode is a little bit... Uh, of a down so we this now the uh, second week in a row where we've seen a little bit of a decline after a peak uh, but not much it is 402,000 viewers down from 430,000 viewers that was in episode five so still around this pretty much exactly the same I mean I doubt that that's like uh, a huge difference in terms of like how it done to the studios or whatever yeah yeah, so, I mean, yeah, we had a little bit, you said it was a decline. Yeah, it yeah. was like a couple of thousand. 28,000 viewer decline. Yeah, which, I, it's, we're still up the 400,000 viewership range. So, I mean, I think that's where they're probably looking at because, uh, I mean, these things do probably probably fluctuate with, you know, the, the network and people trying to watch it and that can. And, you know, then you got all the people downloading the episodes and streaming, which probably isn't included in that, like we said before. It's so. Not. 
probably not a big, huge, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's a big decline, like a huge decline or anything, but we're still in the 400,000 range, which is, I think is a good thing for, especially a show of this kind of nature, you know, where they're, they're obviously are, if you haven't seen the evil dead, you're probably not going to watch the show. You may, but you probably wouldn't get the whole references to everything. So this is basically evil dead fans mainly probably watching the show is what I'm going to assume. So, um, but yeah, you want to go ahead and get an episode JP? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So uh, this episode is titled The Killer of Killers, and it uh, picks up where the last episode left off. We have uh, Ash, Pablo, and Kelly uh, now eating at a diner. But I think before that, don't we see uh, the Ruby and uh, what's her name? Uh, Amanda, yeah, her character. Yeah. Yeah, we see them... um... It looks like they start out, uh, the, the episode starts out and there's like some things on fire, on fire and things of that nature. Um, and it looks like they're standing near the Brujo where, you know, the Brujo's house where he was on fire, he was being cremated and, um, you know, the, there's a lot of things in the yard that's on fire as well. So it kind of starts out them there, uh, and, you know, they, they kind of look down the road, they see Ash's car driving down the road, leaving, uh, and, um, you know, they're kind of just searching around the Brujo's farm. They think that there's somebody's there. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, this like very horribly, in my opinion, CGI'd uh, skeleton. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of one of the Army of Darkness skeletons uh, in a way. Uh, jumps out of the fire where the Brujo was and tries to grab uh, Amanda. Uh, and ends up Ruby stabs the the skeleton and actually pulls her and the skeleton into the fire, and they both disappear. So. You see Ruby at the beginning of the episode, and then she's gone, and we don't see her the rest of the episode. And Amanda takes her car and starts kind of following Ash at this point. Uh, yeah, Amanda's I actually- almost – by the end of the episode, I almost felt like – I was like, oh, yeah, where the hell did Ruby go? Like I totally had forgotten about her. Yeah, she was. She got pulled into the fire and got disappeared. I, I, don't, I don't know if like they pulled her into another dimension or we, – we'll probably find out obviously yeah. in the next episode. But um, yeah, then it kind of picks up – Ash is in this diner. Uh, and he's talking to a guy named Lem about, uh, Lem is like a, I guess an old friend of his, uh, and saying that he wants to meet up at this military base. Um, and he's trying to get information on Lem's camp because apparently they have a lot of weapons. Um, and um, Amanda, the cop is attempting to bring Ash in, uh, you know, wants to basically arrest him and bring him into the precinct. She's stationed up outside though. And she's like kind of calling for backup. Ash and them are in there eventually what happens is uh they <laughs> in a funny scene they decide that they're gonna get out of there and they're gonna go uh do whatever maybe go see that uh gun supply or whatever they're gonna do and they need to pay the bill and he looks at the thing and he's like oh <laughs> and he's yeah. like so pony up guys uh who's paying and you're like well you are you said uh you know, you you got this, and he's like, I did not. And then Kelly like quotes him exactly, and it's like in a voice, it's like, okay, knuckleheads, I'm good. And it's like hilarious. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, so it's he, pretty he funny. Made, you talk about the episode where the, or not the episode, but the scene where the the waitress is like, oh, this is the the waitress comes by and tries to get the check from him later on. That's I'm pretty sure correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, after after that, he's basically like, all right, I'll handle this. You guys go wait outside. And essentially what his master plan is, is he's going to uh, tell the waitress, hey, you know, I'm just going to have sex with you for the bill. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he, and then, like, he does reveal that, oh, the bit, you know, instead of twenty two fifty, dollars uh, you could have uh, at least double what that's worth or whatever. Which is funny because when he first looks at the receipt, he's like, oh, like, like it's this, you think it's like a $60 bill or something. You know what I mean? So... Um, definitely, definitely, uh, a funny moment because Ash, of course, is a cheap ass. So he eventually gets, you know, to, to, he's going to try to seduce her. Uh, and that's pretty much when Amanda comes in into the bathroom, they have a fight. Uh, Ash kind of gets the upper hand. He like notions to her breast or something like that, and yeah. that's funny. And, it was kind of uh, gross that like she hit him and like he ended up in the urinal, like the stall. Like, yeah, he, like, his the, face like, falls when into that the When that happened, nasty I almost stall. like I was like, oh, because there was something hanging off of his hair too, it looked like uh, like somebody else's hair. So like the, she like kicks him and he, he like he goes face first into like a trough, like a urinal trough. It was disgusting. And something that you forgot to mention that I – or maybe you did mention. Maybe I just missed it was about uh, – I don't know if you mentioned about Pablo talking to Kelly about how she tried to have sex with him during – Well, like, that was, was actually happening outside. 
Yeah. Uh, so we were so while all this is going on, Pablo and Kelly did exit and they're now sitting in the camper and there's a bunch of moments where they're kind of like talking about uh, cause Pablo is under the impression, like, he doesn't know what she knows, right? He knows yeah. that he kind of confessed her love to, to her a little bit, but he doesn't really remember, Much. he doesn't really know if she remembers any of it at all. So he's kind of like fishing to see what she knows and what she doesn't know. He exactly. basically is like, hey, you tried to basically fuck me and kill me. And she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. so that's happening. Uh, then you have Amanda and Ash. Uh, in the diner and pretty much by then all hell is broke loose because the the as Amanda's like taking him in her partner shows up and then a deadite shows up possesses him it's a huge battle and that's basically your episode in a nutshell now what did you think of this episode well, something something I will say before we get into the thoughts, uh, there was a scene also where the Necronomicon was trying to attack Pablo because of that Brujo necklace that he that he acquired. Um, yes. And they're trying, they're wanting to destroy the the ne- Necronomicon or like at least put it away so that doesn't happen. But yeah, I mean, get into the thoughts of the episode. Uh, you know, uh, I I did enjoy the episode. I thought it was a really really. Um, I, I like the scene. There was a lot of gore in this episode. That's what I like the most. There was a lot of blood, a lot of gore. I love the scene where Kelly took that, uh, the dead eye, the waitress turned into a dead eye and she like put her head into like a, like a meat slicer. There was so much blood during that scene. It was like insane. And like it showed like the actual gore coming out. I, I'm yeah. just weird like that. I thought the special effects in this episode were really, really good. Um, did I think that it was a huge tier episode? I would give this about a mid, mid tier rating. Like I have given pretty much all the other ones. It, okay. it, it well, didn't let's, really... let's wait to get into the actual tiers first. Okay. First, let's just kind of talk about some of the key points of the episode. Uh, one thing that I will say is that the scene where we do get to see the Necronomicon come alive and stuff, we are in, we are, Pablo kind of hints it like, Oh, wait a minute. You told Ash that you wanted to, uh, basically you know get revenge so you actually want this to keep happening so there is a little scene there where we get to see uh what you mentioned where kelly goes insane on that that dead eye and like beats the hell out of it that yeah. stems from there because she has a lot of aggression pent up from what happened to her family and stuff so we kind of get to see kelly is in it for probably the wrong reasons and pablo even says that where he says my uncle used to say you know uh he said some quote basically i don't remember i didn't write it down or whatever but basically how like revenge is not the best thing or whatever yeah so uh, i think that this episode is kind of a high point in the series like i think we needed this because it is just an action episode a lot of things are happening the story's moving along we hear ash uh we find out that ash needs to sort of go back to the cabin so maybe that's setting something up there. Yeah. He d- he doesn't really want to take the the crew with him. That's towards the end of the episode. He says that. Uh, I I like the idea that we we're talking about the cabin because that could set up for some great TV uh, going forward. Um, Amanda's character finally does something. So that was something yeah. that I very much enjoyed. And honestly, dude, she's actually pretty hot for. 40 years old (laughs) yeah yeah she is she definitely is and something that something i will say about the episode that kind of confused me is like at the end of the episode how she just easily so easily agreed to go with ash i kind of find that a little confusing when she's a cop i kind of felt like maybe she i don't i don't know if she should have taken that route but at the same time i I guess i have to take i'm trying to take this into consideration that these this is somewhat of a comedy and they're trying to just like push the story i just thought you know she was like so against ash and then it took just like that one scene even though she had seen a bunch of other stuff to say okay i guess i'll go with you now that my partner's dead or this other cop but also you have to you do have to kind of consider the fact that okay she was convinced that ash had done this and then it's revealed that he didn't like he's he is actually telling the truth uh, at that point, what do you do? You stay, and then the cops come, and they're like, hey, what happened here? And it's like, oh, everybody got possessed, and they got killed. Like, you know, what are you going to say, right? Yeah, exactly. So really, I guess she, you can't really say much. <laughs> yeah, she's basically – and she was off-duty during all that. So that, you know, you're technically, you know, she can't, I'm sure that the, her partner, her supervisor, whatever had radioed that he's going to do that. He's going to go check out what this Amanda chick said was going on at this diner. So when, so 
considering she was off duty when all this happened and stuff, it probably looks bad for her there. I mean, there, there, it, it is a bit of a stretch that she would just roll with this guy that she never met. But at the same time, it's kind of like the end of the world almost. So what, yeah, yeah. I think know, it's kind of weird that, that a lot of people haven't noticed it's the end of the world. Like, if it, it seems like so far... I am before, kind of wondering about that, Kyle, because in the beginning, the first episode when it attacks the value stop, it seems like it's full-blown like post-apocalyptia going on outside. Yeah. So, but everything else is sort of just sort of normal. Moving like everybody's forward. like I, I think that this this cloud, the one that they showed in the in the Brujo episode, uh, I think that cloud is just kind of following Ash at this point and just destroying things around Ash or where he's going. I don't think it's actually taken over the rest of you know the the town or the population yet. I think that it will, but I think it's just kind of following trying to kill Ash at this point is what what I'm getting at at least or what I'm thinking. So. I guess we'll find out in you know sooner episode or later episodes, but um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I thought the episode like I I agree with you 100. Uh, percent I really enjoyed like the action in this episode. Um, I did like seeing there wasn't a lot of dialogue like yeah, like, the, there was a little bit of that dialogue between Kelly and Pablo where they he was trying to figure out what she knew. I thought that played real well. It kind of wrapped up that little storyline. So we do find out that she doesn't really remember anything. But there is a really funny moment there too when he's like, so uh, you know, what do you, do you think that the demon like was reaching it like your thoughts or you know because yeah, yeah. he basically wants her to say like, yeah, I really do feel that way about you or whatever. And then she's like, yeah, I think he was reaching at my thoughts because I could never see you in that way. So he probably twisted it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. once that, again, he's just shot down, devastated. It's like, he's oh, like, I see you God. as a little brother. That's, that's, that's kind of odd. <laughs> yeah. So once again, Pablo, and I think we'll see this continue on where like Pablo is always going to like her, but she's going to see him as like just this, this like little brother type thing, which is a good thing for now. Eventually I'm, I'm, you're almost certain that they will end up like romantically involved in some way. Uh, you know, that's just how TV goes. But for now, it's cool the way that it's being done. The diner stuff, man, I, I really like the, the inside fight scene. How about that kid, right? Yeah, I know. So that there's kid. a kid that's that in brutal, the toilet, dude. like, shitting, and all this, and he's, like, like, you know, stuck in this situation that's just crappy and eventually makes a run for it and just gets fucking murdered. <laughs> dude, that, that was the funniest thing ever. I didn't expect that whatsoever. No, they were like, no. No, and then they just, he like pushed him up into the fan and he just got like pretty much like impaled by the fan. Electrocuted and like, like split apart by a fan. That was crazy, man. Like I, I never thought that like, I mean, I, I said at one time on the podcast, like the 22 shots podcast I did a guest on, I don't really, like, there wasn't, there's not a lot of scenes in cinema. Like there's not a ton. There are some where you see kids being killed because I think that's kind of like a touchy kind of subject in a way. But, you know, it, this it, is definitely. You know, it's funny that you say that because if you would go back and listen to our first, you know, 20 episodes, I had a huge rant about why I hate films that will not kill kids. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's just not something you see, like, on a daily basis when you're watching films or even TV. And this was, like, a pretty – I mean, this kid was probably 14 years, 13. It wasn't, like, a little kid. But, I mean, he definitely got – pretty brutally killed in this episode so i was pretty stoked on that to be honest with you I'm yeah not, i was too you know. i was like all right so we're, we're going there that means that that means that everything anything's possible in this one there you know there was a lot of funny moments in this one too with ash not being able to pay the bill and the chit the wait waitress he tries to like seduce her basically and she's like well my boyfriend's over there it's like big black guy chopping stuff yeah yeah <laughs> and he's like oh so what you're saying is we need to keep it on the down low god he's <laughs> like, like so confident that's what that's what's like so that's probably why a lot of people like him and he's like yeah. he's, he's dumb he's confident you know what i mean mm -hmm. like he doesn't give a damn about anything yeah so. there was there was also a cool scene where pablo like decided that he's gonna be a bad ass and he slides across the floor like shooting at this demon he's like i got this and he just goes in full like fucking action hero movie he slides across the floor like, doom, 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 <laughs> like shooting he misses every shot and kelly uh, has to come bail his ass out because he's about to die and kelly just stabs the fuck out of this demon sticks his head in a uh, meat slicer and just bashes him up so i mean honestly it, it's a fun fun episode to me this was definitely a highlight in a while so i think now it, you have anything else to say you want to get into tears uh, we can go ahead and get into tears, man. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I already pretty much said my tear, obviously, earlier on. Um, I, I, I just really would give this a, I mean, it was a definitely the, one of the more entertaining episodes I've seen thus far, but I still don't feel like it deserves like a top tier because of the storyline. I don't feel like the storyline really did much for the show at all. It was, it kind of felt like a filler episode as well. Uh, but we did still see some of the Pablo Kelly situation. So I, I would definitely give this a mid tier. Um, 
you know, yet I don't think I've given anything high tier other than the, other than the pilot yet. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, it was definitely entertaining. The gore, the effects, um, the action in this episode definitely kept me excited. I think that the only reason this I'm giving this a mid tier with not giving it a high tier and giving it a mid tier is because there was like not any dialogue that that progressed for the story whatsoever. None, zero. I mean, the only thing was a Kelly Pablo, and you see the whole situation with uh, Amanda going with with Ash at this point. Mm-hmm. But other than that, they're really it didn't really talk much about the evil other than you saw it. It was just like, okay, we're fighting in a diner and that's it. So I don't know. What what about you, JP? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a mid tier as well, but it's very close to a high tier because I actually do think a little bit more happened in this episode than, than you. There was the character development between Pablo and Kelly. There was the arc of Amanda's storyline where she is now with the crew. And I like that. I liked it. Now it's like this, this foursome instead of this trio, like I, I'm curious to see where Amanda goes as a character, what she's going to do. Is she going to be Ash's love interest? Like, what's going on here? I'm curious to see where that goes. I love the idea that maybe that they're they're going to go to the cabin because that would be a huge plot line. And they kind of set that one up here. We're introduced to Ash's crazy weirdo friend that I don't I have no idea what he has to do with it. Uh, there actually is a really good shot of uh, the woods uh, they have the they they shot the the wood I don't know the the trees look really cool in, in one of the shots but uh, overall it's it's an action episode it's all about like just let's kill some deadites like and uh, that that definitely was well needed in the the sixth episode uh, mid this kind of mid area of the of the series now so I think this episode came at the perfect timing but I will just keep my mid tier rating it's very close to a high tier though uh, but yeah so that that's basically this episode. Uh, so uh, I guess we get out of here now, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, you know, be on the lookout for us uploading these episodes to our channels, The Horror File, Double Shot J. Uh, check us out on iTunes, like we said earlier, and uh, yeah, that is it. All right, guys, so uh, stay tuned for more coverage of the Ash vs. Evil Dead, and until then, we will see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>